Hello everybody, it's SD Matt Haven here today, and well, we're gonna be taking a look at the CS59. This is a Polish tier 9 that was recently added into the game as of the most recent Tuesday that we have. If you're catching this video later on, hope you guys are ready to get this tank because I'll tell you now. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm not gonna lie, I had a lot of free experience built up by the time I managed to get this tank. I had a refund come in of 11,600 gold, so I just converted experience and I jumped all the way up to tier 9. And I'm probably going to be buying every single tank from the Polish medium lines and going over every single one of them. I think that these tanks are absolutely phenomenal. They're fantastic. They may not be the most heavily armored tanks in the game, but you know what? They hold up well. Now, before any of this, let's go ahead Take a look at some statistics here. Keep in mind, this is not a review. We're definitely not doing a review yet on any of these tanks because they're too new to do that. I need to put a lot more matches inside these to give you guys more of an idea on how the matchmaking works around them, how they're feeling, and just honestly, overall, just give me some time. They're, I'm, I'm enjoying these. I, I want to make sure whenever I get a review out on these, they're going to be my best, period, because... These things are insane. I gotta say, the concealment they have, 0.27 base on the tier 9. The gun, the 252, 293, and then 53 millimeters. Keep in mind, that's AP, APCR, and high explosives. A 390 alpha, 510, 800, 510 high explosive, 1800 hit points. Now, there, there's a couple really cool things about this tank. So, the 100 millimeter is actually not that bad. 220 base pin with 290 heat i actually feel like i prefer the heat rounds more than i do the apcr on the top gun but the difference between them you're looking at you know 90 damage on the difference there along with that you know the reload 0.8 compared to 0.1 so 8.1 compared to 8.8 but cool part is check this out 17.99 horsepower to ton now if we were to take the tracks make them stock Compared to having them regular. So even, even the stock. It doesn't feel too bad with the stock. 42. It's going to bring up your power to weight. Or you can downgrade the turret. Downgrade the gun. Sacrifice only 10 meters of view range. And 50 hit points. But gain. A very substantial amount of power to weight. Just to get this thing on the move. And moving around quick. Then again. For me that's, that's more for pay to play. You know, people who pay, you got premium time, you got silver built up, and you just want to load a ton of heat rounds and enjoy that massive amount of damage going out there. It's honestly really nice. But up next, we have the armor model. So, we're not... Tanks GG, statistics on this. You know, the 8.44, not much of a difference on the gun itself entirely, but the gun dispersion is a little bit different, everything's a little bit different. 17.99, so prior to weight, it's the same, everything else is the same, but... This is against the 252 AP round. There's not a lot of armor on this tank to begin with. The top plate is only 110 millimeters thick. The lower plate, well, it's probably looking at 80 millimeters. So you can corner peek inside this tank and force them to try and do a bait shot. It can be really nice to do that. Along with that, the 45 millimeters of side armor cannot be overmatched by 120. So against those 150s and those big boys, keep in mind they can't overmatch that side. So just take it nice and slow. Now... Last but not least, I have been performing so good inside the CS, I have a 66% win rate out of 50 matches. I chose to do 50 matches before I did the preview, not the review, but this tank so far has blown all of my expectations out of the water for how it's performing. It is just... It's, it's great. I don't know how to compare it. It's just absolutely it concealment combined with everything else it's really hard to go over now time for the match trying to not make these too long but at the same time you know it's world of tanks it's kind of hard to do 10 minute videos 15 minute videos you, you should be expecting 20 to 25 minutes honestly but you know what totally fine i don't mind it kicking back i'm enjoying myself and so we're middle tier, the CS59, and you now while I'm doing stuff, I can close all this and move this around to get a better view with you guys. 
beautiful, beautiful view. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm seeing two artilleries. I'm seeing a couple of other things pop up. I think to myself, you know, CS-59, we, we have 18 horsepower to ton. Along with that, top speed of 50, we have exactly 288.98 still concealment. Now, a, a couple of things I, I'm going to share that I want to share. A lot of my medium tanks... I do not use gun rammers on anymore. Since they have changed the way that concealment nets work and how they're always active, I find that I would rather use a concealment net over using a gun rammer just so then I can take shots safely in some positions and not worry about it too much. It, it For me, it's been helping me out a lot and honestly I believe it's the reason why I managed to get a 66% win rate inside this tank over the course of 50 matches. Not just that, with the fully upgraded turret and everything else on this, the 105 with the APCR, it's it's nice. I like heat rounds a lot more, but APCR works just as well. So the match is going off pretty slow. We're already getting detected by the Vanguard. Got to slap on the reverse. Now, the new Polish mediums that are added to the game, a lot of people are grinding them right now. And it, it's supposed to be expected. A lot of people are going to be grinding these tanks just because they're new, Everyone wants to get their hands on them, and that's why I want to wait to do an official review on these tanks. And I'm going to take the time out to make sure they're good. They're not going to go down. They're going to take it nice and slow. And right here, we're trying to get some distance. So we got past the 345 meter mark, which is the limit that allows you to spot at 445 so we can safely take a shot without being detected. And now that he's pulled back, we're going to start pushing up and getting up in there as quick as we can. So, using the power to weight that this thing has, you know, just a little bit of a showing off driving along the side of the hill there. Doing that, it's it's a small little thing, you know, because you're going along the side, it makes it a little bit harder to hit you. And at the same time, you just, you can't control it, so it's just fun. You know, let's just add some technical stuff to that. And along with that, the Sheridan getting hit for probably about 1,200, and we spot assisted all of that. So we're up to 1,767 so far. It's going to be a nice game. Now, I did get a mastery badge inside the CS-59 with only the second upgrade on the tank, which is the tracks. And honestly, getting my hands on that mastery badge with the stock gun made me feel really good. I do believe I have that match recorded, and I'll probably be using it later in the future, just because even if you're in a stock tank, you just got to use it as to the best of the ability you can. Play it like it's a tier 8, play it like it's a tier 7. And just act like you're not top tier. Just play around, take it slow. And every once in a while, you know, you, you get those guys out there that will send out messages. And they're just not being nice about it. But you know what? You're out there. You're trying your hardest. So don't let them put you down. Now, putting one shot into the CS-59 and the enemy team, we're going to try and take him down as quick as we can along with that Type 59. Taking a shot from the back from the mouse. So we want to get out of there because three tanks were kind of stuck out in the open. We're the only ones spotted. The guys in the back not detected. So issues there. We take a shot from the fatherland. He's loading premium. We put one in and now it's all about trying to get out of the way. We're popping the food to give us the extra concealment, to give us the extra view range, to bolster our crew as much as we can. We're pulling out, trying to force them to take a shot. We do. We get one in. Back off. Take it slow. Take it slow. There's no point to rush these engagements. Now, at this moment, I'm thinking to myself, there are still three tanks behind me. I do not want to get caught out around that building. I just wanted to use that building in order to block the shots coming from the other way. Tortoise coming up. Fatherland. We want to try and move around as quick as we can. And we out-DPM him. And we also out-traverse mobility, everything else in between. Tortoise is trying to come through the building. Ramming buildings, don't get me wrong, it, it's a viable strategy, but it doesn't work because each time you hit a building, it slows you down. And the person who's not hitting the building is going to have a lot more chances to get in, move around, and just easier mobility. Along with that, we also take down the Type 59, so we, we've taken out a Fatherland, we've taken out a Tortoise, and we've taken out a Type 59. Already up to 2,000 assisted, 
2,937 dealt and 1,003 blocked. Now, I was kind of relying on my uh, concealment right here to help me out, but the Waffle Panzer IV off in the distance there, the Tier 9 German tank destroyer spotted us out. So now we're just going to try and push along the backside. We're down to 290 hit points, and looking at the way the match is going, 8 to 7, and the positions and where the team is located, we're going to try and push along the backside because we know where artillery is firing from. We have a general idea, but at the same time, that Waffle Panzer IV, I kind of feel like he's going to be pushing us, so we want to take a bit slow, and right here, I get tunnel visioned. I did not pull up where I wanted the pull up originally to spot out the Waffle Panzer IV. So by doing that, I tunnel visioned and I started to make just a couple of mistakes, nothing too crazy. Trying to come up around the backside, you know, knowing that off in the distance here, I'm going to be able to spot out the Waffle Panzer. Waffle Panzer, he gets detected. And... Oh, lucky us, bouncing off of our turret. So, even though we showed off the armor model and the armor on this tank doesn't look like it's the greatest armor, there's a lot of angles on this tank that whenever you're maxing out your gun depression or whenever you're doing anything else, the ball-shaped turret, the way that it's put together, it kind of acts like a T-54. So, there's angles on the turret that's going to be really hard for it to be pinned, which just gives you all that extra advantage. Not just that, the concealment it has, the view range, this tank, playing it a little bit aggressive or taking it slow and relaxed. Now, looking up at the board, we're 5-5, five to five, and I noticed this while I was in the fight with the Waffle Panzer IV. Thinking to myself, it's, we need to try and stay alive as long as we can. So using the rock in between us to try and prevent him from spotting us to allow us to get further back to set up a position. That way we can use the concealment of the tank as much as we can. Knocking down a couple of trees, ma making a couple of spots. So since both those trees are now knocked down, if he looks over here and he sees that, he might blind fire into those ones, but then coming up top to do a second set, that way we have two positions to move between, that way it's really hard to blind fire us and not sitting in those spots for long periods of time. It, it just makes it a lot better. So now 4-3, to three, a little bit more comfortable knowing that the artillery and the tank destroyer are off to this side. It's going to be pretty nice. But at the same time, it is an E-100 that's across the way. And we need to try and pay attention to what's going on. And I know it's an E-100 because um, one of the guys in my platoon was saying he just got taken out by the uh, E-100 or the artillery. But he, he mentioned that the uh, E-100 was further up and ready to take a couple hits. So listening to him we're going to fall back through the middle of the map and if you keep an eye on the the mini map we have that dotted line that goes around that dotted line is actually your effective concealment and i'm sorry for everyone who already knows that kind of monologuing here you know that's how it goes stopping behind the bush taking a shot nice and simple easy moving up pushing up knocking over just a couple of trees just to guarantee that we do not get spotted out because we do not want to get hit on the right side by the waffle panzer four now I have been talking to a couple of people inside public lobbies and, you know, just going game chat and talking with a couple of guys, but a lot of them tell me they don't like to hit trees because they think that they're going to get hit by Artie, they're going to get, you know, blind fired, and I've told them. I've been hitting trees now for months, and I have not experienced it once. Because at this moment, Artillery is more focused on the three people who are alive, which allows us to build a nest on the outskirts. One of the only tanks that is aware that we're out here is the Waffle Panzer IV and the E-100 after we put a shot into them. Along with that, with all the trees and everything else that's inside the maps, you know, focusing out one area. I, I'm not expecting artillery to watch a tree for five minutes and see it fall over and immediately get one shot, but it, it has happened. And the chances that it happens is probably one in a thousand. It's very low. It doesn't happen often at all. Now, I feel a little bit comfortable with my team being back there. The two tank destroyers and the one heavy. So I decided to push up, get back into my position to see if that Waffle Panzer IV is still back there. And watching the left side now, we see Conqueror gun carriage taking out the T-57. Waffle Panzer IV taking out the T-1103. And now that I see that, 
I know that the Waffle Panzer IV has relocated to assist his E-100 in trying to kill our team, which means he's probably located around J-3, maybe even H-3 up in the city, picking a couple pop shots across the way. So we're just going to be pulling on down and hoping that we can try and spot the arty and take out the artillery to assist our 4005 to make it to where it's a little bit harder to take him down. Now, Vineyards, I I'm a little uh, hesitant on this map, but it's a good map. So that shot right there, I waited for the Waffle Panzer IV to get behind the bushes before I fired so I can stay concealed. Along with that, I'm falling back to my position that I want to get back to, to hold myself. Because, you know, it's like, I made a nest. Let's go use it. You know, I know I got better view range than the waffle, and possibly even better concealment than the waffle, especially if I'm sitting behind these. And since the E100's across the map, and the waffle knows I'm on this side, he, he, might want, he might feel that he needs to be a little bit more aggressive towards me. So now that we're locked back down to our position, just kick, wait around a little bit, a little bit watch the mini-map, you know, see that the E100's back up. Thinking about pulling around, possibly trying to help out the FV4005, knowing that if he goes down, there's a chance that I'm not going to be able to get the win because it's going to be a three versus one and I'm a one shot to all three of the enemies. So loading in the APCR and trying to come back around because we need to take out that E100 as quick as we can. E100 is extremely big threat. Especially with that 150-334 heat pin, it is a monstrous tank. Now, seeing the 157 roll off of the E100, I, I started to panic. <laughs> but knowing that he's a one hit at 274 hit points, kind of it, it brought a little bit of ease back knowing that I got 293 premium pin. So now that I think about it, I just want to get out of there just in case if the waffle if if the fp4005 goes down i do not want to get caught out i want to make sure that i have distance and full control off in the fields using my mobility using my concealment and the dispersion values of my gun so seeing the fp4005 just barely took out the e100 i decided to say great shot because this is a very intense fight I'm done the 290 hit points. I do not know what the 4005 is at, but a couple of things were coming to my mind. There's not a lot of time left at all. So right now to cap out a base, it takes about one minute and 40 seconds. So one of the first things that came to mind was there's a couple of trees over here on this spawn. We're gonna try and avoid going inside the cap circle we want to make sure that we can get this position set up as fast as we can and immediately get on the cap. So now that we have the trees and the bushes in front of us covering us, it's 1 minute and 35 seconds until the base is captured and only a minute and 37 left in the game. So there's about a second seconds, 7 seconds worth of clearance before the victory or a tie. So, little trick, I'm using the white line of my gun to see where the train tracks come up. Knowing that the bushes are keeping me covered, we're going to hold our shell against that waffle. We're going to back up further away from the trees. Now that they are solid, we are now able to take a shot. 202, and then the 4005 puts in the shell to help shut down the <laughs> shut down the tier 9 Borsig so the Waffle Panzer IV is now out it is now up to artillery to try and reset the cap or take me out to try and get a tie so moving out to the side of the spawn because a lot of the time artillery is probably thinking they're camping behind they're camping in the middle they're not camping out in the open but he's not going to try to spot us so we're going to sit out in the open there's no problem on doing this. I'm watching the shell go flying. He tried the blind shot, and unlucky for him, there was no blind shot. And 4,005 coming in 
with the finish. 533. Great game. And, honestly, I had to stand up and walk away for a moment because I, my heart was pounding after this match. It was a really close game. And matches like this, they always get the blood pumping. They're the reasons why I love to play World of Tanks. Just some fantastic matches. So, taking a look, 4,340, uh, 2,641 assisted, a total of almost 7,000 combined. Only a second class mastery. A lot of the shots that we were taking were outside of our view range, so a little bit less experience, but still we had the top experience over the team for 1,780 and four kills to go along with that. So, CS59, tier 9, Polish medium, one of the newest tanks of the game. It's going to take a little bit of a minute. It's going to take a bit to get the review out in this tank because I want to make sure it's thorough. I want to make sure I can tell you guys exactly how to play this tank, how to make it perform to the fullest that you can get it to. And before we continue, and before we're done, let's take a look at the crew. So, born leader, rapid loading, off-road driving, just to give us that extra little bit, because we're trying to utilize that power to weight as much as we can. We have steady aim, which is the only accuracy perk that we have on this crew to begin with, along with that muffled shot to allow us to take shots behind foliage, trees, whatever we can to not be detected. Six sense, situational awareness, track mechanic, and silent driving, because it is a medium tank. Silent driving, I highly recommend to have on every single medium tank that you play. It is one of the biggest things that can help you with life or death, or maybe even increasing your survival over every single match that you're playing, and just keeping you covered. It It's honestly probably one of the strongest perks to have on a medium tank. So, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, hit us up over on Discord or catch me over on Twitch. So, until next time, you guys have a great day. I'll see you out, out in the battlefield.